Yes. Great. Yeah, so um, hi, my name is Manjot Singh. I'm lead enterprise architect at MariaDB. And uh, I'm here with my colleague, Tim Yim, who's VP of cloud platform operations. And uh, actually Gabby gave us a great segue into, you know, and Deepti of course, uh, into go with a, a managed service uh, that will help make uh, your deployment more reliable. So let's talk about what MariaDB can offer in that uh, regard. Uh, so we'll talk about what is Sky SQL and some basic features and a bit of architecture. Uh, so there's a few options out there for DBAS, right? Um, a lot of them have been around for a while. They're easy to use. They have good automation and uh, push button deploys. Um, and, you know, they're widely deployed. Uh, but the reality is different once you uh, begin to use them. What you realize is that a, a lot of MariaDB features are missing uh, once you move to the cloud. Uh, that's true of any other products that are put into DBAS. Uh, and your version is always quite a bit behind. Uh, whether it's a few months, uh, a major version, or a few years. So I'm thinking of Aurora and some other offerings, right? They might be based on code from years ago uh, and not updated necessarily to the latest patches and fixes, or, or they may be cherry-picked. Uh, so you may not realize it until you get uh, bit by a fixed bug or a missing security patch. Uh, and so the cloud DBAS that's available, uh, like I said, is, is watered down as well as out of date. And so there's many great features available for MariaDB, for example, that are not part of the core InnoDB service uh, that something like RDS would give you. Uh, Column Store, Expand, Myrox, Spider, various replication topologies, these are all good examples. Uh, MariaDB has something like five different ways to create a database cluster. Uh, and so, you know, the latest Galera multi-primary, Expand distributed SQL cluster, these are all available in, in Sky SQL today. Uh, you can't get these in, in other DBASs like at AWS or, or Google or others. Um, so all of these various features and storage engines uh, with MariaDB use the same SQL layer. Um, and so now you're not having to learn to use multiple services, learn different SQL or no SQL syntaxes. You can kind of just use it from the same, <clears throat> the same endpoint. Um, and we have many features that um, just aren't made available by these cloud providers in their cookie cutter DBAS. Um, and so what ends up happening is users want MariaDB's expertise and features. And so then they either have us support RDS or you know, they move to EC2 uh, or something similar. And then they have you know, all this automation or orchestration they have to build around it so they can use all of MariaDB's features or even just for simple things like performance tuning. Um, but then they have to give up, you know, like I said, some of that push button automation. So what's our vision, right? That's why we built Sky SQL. We think it's really important to provide customers with a path to multi uh, and hybrid cloud. Uh, we wanna be multi-cloud where businesses aren't at the mercy of that single cloud vendor, uh, but there's also a practical reason. So if you think of AWS, Azure, uh, and GCP, let's say we wanna have a multi-cloud cluster um, that's also multi-region, but maybe uh, local to Northern California. Uh, because maybe you, you have latency issues or, or other considerations. Uh, we can pick the same region across clouds, different data centers, uh, and replicate across the vendors, uh, distributing your workload based on factors such as cost, efficiency, and performance. Uh, we want to make it easier and cheaper to use many features. So instead of like an RDS and a Redshift bill, you just have your Sky SQL service that can kind of do it all. So Sky SQL ensures you have uh, the option for the latest bug fixes, uh, patches, uh, and features. Uh, so if you want you know, the latest 10.5 enterprise uh, with scale out transactions, that's all available to you today. Uh, we actually did a, a big launch yesterday with a lot of new scale out features. So we, we also have uh, machine learning for insights into tuning and performance uh, with a path to self tuning to reduce risk and uh, fix performance issues as they happen. But most importantly, MariaDB knows MariaDB well. So we're experts on our product uh, and able to release our latest, most stable enterprise build uh, as a service backed by you know, our great support and managed services, but we're also competitive. Uh, so some basics and features before we get into the cool uh, architecture stuff. Um, Sky SQL has all the customization, self-service and automation out of the box that you expect from database as a service. But now you have that on-premises reliability in the cloud. You have MariaDB Enterprise with stronger QA, 
uh, along with full service expertise on demand. Uh, we take proactive steps as necessary. Um, and you have you can actually have us do as little or as many of your database management duties as you need. Uh, it's also competitive again. So our goal is to meet the needs of both developers and enterprise organizations, and I, I think also DBAs. So you can choose uh, to deploy MariaDB for OLTP or OLAP um, or both at the same time. Um, we can support smart transactions uh, for, for your modern applications by storing your data in a row format on block storage and then your tra uh, and for transactions and then in a column format uh, on object storage for analytics. And you can also access both row and columnar data in the same query for smart transactions. So you can actually hit up both engines and do a join that maybe takes advantage of your columnar uh, storage uh, while also perhaps using uh, OLTP tables uh, for, for part of that, that query. Um, so Tim and his team designed SkySQL on Kubernetes, uh, fronted by ServiceNow. Uh, and, and ServiceNow is a leader in, in uh, IT service management uh, and workflows. So naturally, uh, we use that uh, for the front end. Uh, Prometheus and Grafana are standards for monitoring. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with that. Uh, so SkySQL Monitor uses that. Uh, there's trans, uh, transparent uh, query routing. Um, you know, with most DBAS, you get one or more endpoints, like a writer and a reader endpoint. If you want to do read-write splitting or balancing, normally you kind of have to figure all that out uh, or how to do it with other products. Uh, SkySQL kind of obfuscates that complexity and automatically manages the topology behind the scenes. Uh, so whether it's failover, adding replicas, round robin, what have you, uh, SkySQL manages all that and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's sort of all managed by, by max scale. Um, you can do cool things like uh, failover where, you know, in a query, if, you're, if your node goes down, max scale will just actually replay on the next node. Uh, and you won't know besides having a slightly slower query. So um, these types of features all come to, to the cloud with, with SkySQL. Um, we also have some, some services, just to sum up. SkySQL gives you, uh, you know, transactions, analytics, or both, the real-time monitoring that you expect, disaster recovery uh, with automatic backups and point in time, um, and high availability with self-healing. Uh, the really cool parts, though, are the multi-node high availability um, with multi-zone deployments, the replication, the failover, um, the scalability, the scale-out SQL that we've, we've just released yesterday. Uh, including Galera, uh, the, the product previously known as Clustrix, which is now Expand uh, as a storage engine, uh, which you can go up to, I think, 20 nodes. Uh, and Tim, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, so it's, it's pretty exciting uh, where SkySQL is headed. And the last release, I think, really shows uh, a lot of uh, where we're going with it. Uh, the other thing you get is SkyDBA comes with SkySQL. It gives you certified cloud architects who are experts in MariaDB. So we give you that consultative support. Uh, it's close to engineering and SkySQL's SREs. Um, they perform great proactive care, such as audits and health checks. Um, so with that, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Tim to speak about how he actually designed and deployed SkySQL. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. So um, uh, some of the content here will be a little bit the same, but there's gonna be some visuals and I'll explain uh, the actual architecture behind the scenes. So with some simple diagrams. So let's move on there, Manjot, next slide there. So as uh, my friend was saying there, um, we tried to design the entire thing using you know, state-of-the-art technologies. It is running uh, on Kubernetes for container orchestration and high availability. Uh, we're using ServiceNow for configuration and workflow management, and there's an important aspect as to why that is, and I'll explain why on the next slide with the, the diagrams. Um, Cortex backed Prometheus and Grafana for real-time monitoring and visualization. At, at every layer of the stack, we tried to use modern CNCF technologies to try to uh, you know, keep up and, and actually lead some of these initiatives for a uh, multi-substrate, multi-cloud DBAS strategy. Um, the, the modularity of the design is on purpose and, and very much by design. Um, the portal is in ServiceNow, which has uh, six nines availability. Uh, the databases themselves are in each cloud service provider as single tenant Kate's clusters. So we get that hard line 
isolation from customer to customer to meet their regulated industries and all of those um, uh, the needs that they they bring right through financials or or whatever it may be PII uh, and then the Sky SQL control plane in each cloud service provider sits in between that portal and the databases and um, Talking a little bit about security, I mean, that would be an entire talk just by itself, uh, but the compartmentalization and isolation and indirect access for uh, all of the Sky DBAs and Maria DB employees together uh, is, you know, using uh, the vault system, which again, you know, CNCF technology is at every single layer and uh, it's actually, it, it's so locked down, we actually had troubles diagnosing some real customer issues. <laughs> so uh, secure by design, secure from day one and, uh, you know, very, very safe and, and isolated. So next slide, please. Okay, so this is uh, just a simple block diagram that explains the entire stack that we're building. And this is, you know, as I said, multi substrate, multi cloud uh, with uh, a separate portal. So if we start at the top, the ServiceNow Sky SQL portal uh, handles our inventory management, configuration management, uh, organizations, and team management for our customers, uh, as well as the uh, orchestration engine for workflow management. So the jobs get kicked off from the ServiceNow system. And uh, then in each cloud service provider, you'll see the, the top box is the Sky SQL control plane. Um, that control plane receives commands from our workflow engine and orchestration uh, to you know, execute the jobs through the Kubernetes API. And uh, as it is right now, we are indeed using the managed uh, Kubernetes services across each of the cloud service providers. And then, of course, inside uh, the Kubernetes clusters are uh, the databases themselves, which are containerized with many other uh, containers. It's not just a database container, right? You need uh, INIT containers, you need management containers, you need orchestration containers. So um, it, it's actually quite uh, a lot of lessons that we learned trying to get these stateful and persistent databases running on these Kubernetes systems in a scalable and secure fashion. All right, next slide, please. Uh, this is just a little bit of a different view, sort of the same thing. So on the left-hand side now is the service now with the uh, control plane and the uh, customer admins will log in through the web UI that is the portal. Uh, they manage their inventory and then can fire off workflows. Uh, those workflows get executed as tasks over to the Sky SQL Operations Center, which is our control plane. Uh, we have our task server on there, our monitoring servers, our Cortex system, uh, and then uh, the jump server. We call it jump, but it's really a bastion host, uh, and it goes through all of the uh, cloud service providers, I, um, ident aware proxies, right? IAP, IAM, uh, and that's where our Sky DBAs log in. Uh, so everything is logged, everything is auditable for those regulated industries. And then uh, both the jobs, automated jobs through the task server or manual jobs from the Sky DBAs get executed over onto each of the customer clusters, regardless of what uh, cloud service provider they're on. So um, that is how uh, the, the back end works. And then of course the customer applications uh, connect in through the firewall where everything is locked down through uh, either VPC tunnels and firewalls or a combination there. And so highly secure, I mean, there, there's no external access at all into these systems and uh, both uh, the automated jobs and the Sky DBA jobs are fully authenticated uh, through our Sky SQL operation control plane. Next slide, please. All right, so for high availability, <clears throat> um, you know, Kubernetes with MariaDB Max Scale is a marriage made in heaven, honestly. Um, you get the best of both worlds. It's uh, cloud native and MariaDB native. Uh, Kubernetes itself provides the self-healing or rescheduling of the underlying nodes and the underlying containers. Uh, you know, it, underneath all of these abstractions, right, it's just another machine. It's just another computer and, and those things fail. And Kubernetes, uh, you know, does provide uh, a great self-healing capability there. but you know, who's in control of those incoming transactions. Um, you know, so the MariaDB Max scale provides that automatic failover so we don't lose any transactions. And it, you know, all of the traditional stuff that you'd expect on-prem, right? Uh, 
auto replica promotion into a new primary. And all of those things have been married with Kubernetes and uh, it's quite a robust self-healing system. So I'll walk through an example here. Let's go next slide. Keep going, thank you. <clears throat> um, all right, so this is uh, a traditional primary with two replicas and it's multi-zonal with Kubernetes spanning all three of those zones, right? Zone A, zone B, zone C. Uh, the primary is in zone A and the uh, endpoint uh, max scale is also in zone A. And we use the, uh, if this was on Google, it would write, it would be the zonal Google persistent disks. So, you know, in this uh, regular scenario, let's say that the primary database fails. Next slide, please. So now you've got uh, a failed primary, but you've got incoming transactions. Well, MaxScale is actually going to identify that first, and it's going to start sending uh, the transactions to zone B for, um, you know, ultimate HA. And now it's going to promote that replica into the new primary. So you can see in zone B in the middle there, the... Uh, the, what was a replica is now our primary. And then on the back end, Kubernetes is gonna kick in and replace that failed node on zone A, right? So the one with the red X failed and now Kubernetes underneath it replaced it with a new node and a new container. And then as soon as that comes back up, we register it with max scale, or excuse me, not yet, not max scale, sorry. So as soon as that new node comes up and that new container comes up, we take a snapshot of the new primary that is in zone B and we use that snapshot to seed the new database and the new replica in zone A. Once that comes up, once replication catches up, we register it max scale. Next slide, please. And everything is complete. So uh, along with that auto failing and auto, uh, auto healing, um, we also have what uh, is, you know, widely referred to as HTAP. Uh, SkySQL is, you know, sort of the reference cloud architecture for smart OLTP. Um, as my friend Manjot was also saying, you know, uh, with OLTP, of course, data is stored as rows on block storage underneath. So either the EBS or GPDs, depending on cloud service provider. And of course, these are what everybody is used to, right? It's very fast and very persistent, same as all of the other cloud service providers, such as RDS or Cloud SQL. And then of course, for your OLAP, um, you want those to be stored as your S3 or GCS, right? Um, and, and that's really due to the, the low cost and unlimited capacity of these analytic systems that, that you, you need for your BI systems, right? Um, but if you're combining the both of them and getting into a smart OLTP uh, with MariaDB, you can actually replicate uh, from the row block storage into the columnar object storage with one system. You don't need multiple systems anymore. You don't need to manage completely separate systems. You don't need to manage completely separate connection pools in your app. Uh, single system, single endpoint for both types of data. So um, let's do next slide, please. So this would be uh, a reference architecture for uh, MariaDB HTAP. Um, again, it's fronted by MariaDB MaxScale uh, on Kubernetes underneath it for that uh, multi-zonal HA and auto healing. And then uh, multiple MariaDB servers across each of the zones would be in the middle. Uh, on the far left would be the primary database where uh, all the right transactions are fed. And then of course, replica one and up to replica X, Y, or Z on the right. And then inside of each MariaDB server, you're gonna see uh, multiple storage engines working simultaneously and together, right? You've got the regular transaction system, which is row-based and in ODB. Uh, but then we've also got the analytics and column store engine within the same server. And each of those storage engines would be running on different storage, right? You want your uh, high throughput transactions, OLTP to be running on the ultra fast uh, GPD, GPD or uh, G I'm tripping over my own tongue this morning. Uh, the persistent disks or the uh, elastic block storage, of course, and then on the uh, column or uh, you'd want it to be on the GCS or S3 at the bottom. And the beauty there is, as I was explaining, this is a single system now. Uh, ultimate HA from the MariaDB max scale and auto healing on Kubernetes with uh, a single system serving both uh, high throughput transactions and analytics 
and what is not shown in here, uh, we should probably add this diagram as I'm talking through it, is how the transactions uh, can flow directly into the columnar storage. So as the writes come into the primary uh, transactions, those will be replicated into the analytics column store as well. So uh, as soon as you, one part of your app does a write for data, um, another part of your app can read that through the BI systems and run the very large BI analytics queries. So um, next slide, please. And then just a little bit about the roadmap here. Um, there are no dates on here, apologies for that, but we have to be uh, a little bit cautious with our forward-looking statements here. Um, you know, as, as we said, we're building a multi-substrate, multi-cloud database as a service across all of the public cloud providers. So uh, Google Cloud, Amazon, and then Microsoft Azure, and then uh, Google Anthos is actually on the roadmap as well to get to uh, not only public cloud providers, but into uh, an on-prem public cloud hybrid type of setup using SkySQL as well. And then multiple topologies, right? The multiple substrates is uh, obviously HA and replicated, uh, clustered with Galera or the new Expand engine that just uh, got released yesterday. So if you're interested, please go check it out. It is live. And then uh, HTAP technologies, and uh, you know, as I just said, the distributed Expand there. <clears throat> Um, for the health, uh, you know, we already do have the MariaDB monitoring system and monitoring dashboards available uh, that are tailored by, you know, the actual SkyDBAs and tailored by people that use it every single day. Uh, it's not just some off-the-shelf uh, diagrams that might not be relevant to database workloads. <clears throat> um, we do have the machine learning team for workload analysis that can identify workload patterns and help make recommendations back to... Uh, for auto tuning and auto scaling. Uh, that's gonna be the guided configuration and then which will lead to uh, self-serve, self-optimization uh, in that direction. And then of course on scalability, right? That's still very important for the biggest customers and, and their demands. Um, you know, we're, we are focusing on both read scaling and write scaling, uh, you know, before we can do some of these things, you have to solve some of the infrastructure scaling first. Uh, so you, you're going to have to focus on on-demand compute scaling based on the signals either from our monitoring system or workload analysis. So you can have that, uh, you know, as I said before, you know, guided configuration and, and then self-optimization self and then self-driven scaling as well. Uh, and then, of course, once you can scale up your, your compute on, on the database, you're going to need uh, the appropriate automatic storage scaling and then you combine them all together and you get a very clear picture of complete end-to-end -end automatic scaling. And uh, I think that's about it for me. Yeah, and uh, thanks, thanks, Tim. Uh, I did wanna mention uh, we have a $500 credit uh, to get started uh, for actually for anybody that joins. <laughs> I should have taken out that first 10 uh, attendees, but uh, you can actually play with it right now uh, using that credit thanks to our friends at, at Google, uh, like Gabby. Um, so any questions? Are you guys planning any tighter integrations with any of the, the hyperscale providers or, right, kind of two-part question, uh, or open sourcing um, the, the Kubernetes operator that, that you're using to kind of create the scalability and self-healing, maybe not some of the other stuff, but just the, the, the great Kubernetes bits? Yeah, great question. Um, first part is, yes, uh, I mean, we already are, you know, the, the credit uh, that Manjot mentioned is is provided by Google. So yes, we, we are partnering with the uh, cloud providers on that front. And as far as open sourcing the operator, um, that that is a discussion that we are having internally. Right, the the heart and core of MariaDB is obviously you know very community driven and, and open source. Um, but there's there's a lot to learn. And still, right, running persistent workloads and databases in the Kubernetes environment. And you know, as I said in the very beginning, it's not just an operator anymore, right? This is INIT containers. This is management containers. This is orchestration systems. Um, you know, it's it's building an entire ops department. Uh, and and we're, we want to make sure that um, we're putting our best foot forward on all of these systems. And 
Um, I actually don't have the definitive answer on whether or not uh, it will ever be open source, but um, I, I do know that those conversations are happening. Great, yeah, I think that, you know, it's a perfect segue into, right? If other people want to run MariaDB in Kubernetes, you know, we just heard from a, a panel of, you know, the, the kind of the who's who in the space right now saying operator is, is the way to bridge that gap. It seems like Maria has come up with a different way to bridge that gap. And it, it's, you know, really a, a unique offering in the space um, for you guys to be able to deploy kind of on any cloud right now. Um, is there any plans uh, for kind of unified billing or like the experience that you get from RDS um, specifically um, it with Sky SQL? Like, is it going to be its own thing or is it very much still going to be MariaDB and then Sky SQL is, is a component of that? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the, the last comment there, but yeah, I mean, the unified billing, that's, that's already there, right? So multi-substrate, multi-cloud, uh, having MariaDB uh, be the service provider, of course, that's going to be a unified bill no matter where uh, the customer chooses to build that topology or what topology they choose, right? That, that, that is going to be a single bill. I could have an HTAP running on EKS and uh, expand running on GKE, and it's going to be a single bill sent to the customer. Uh, 